A few episodes ago we discussed the element vanadium and in that video we showed a mineral of my uncle's mineral collection which I inherited a few years ago. My uncle had a deep interest for minerals like I have a deep interest for the elements and chemistry and he labeled these minerals meticulously. So when we showed a mineral vanadonite in the video I was surprised when a mineralist in the comments pointed out that what we were showing was aragonite and not vanadonite. But it also gave me a great idea to explore chemistry some more. I honestly do not know whether the sample we showed was vanadonite, but we have ways of testing this. And that's what we shall do in this video. Welcome to Cube Chemistry, where we will discuss all the elements in the periodic table and also do experiments. Now, if you like these videos and want to see more, make sure to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you will never have to miss another episode. Also, fill in the poll in the post section of the channel so you can influence next week's element. So in order to make it more exciting, we have set a poll for both teams, Team Venadonite and Team Aragonite. Here are the results at the moments of editing on Tuesday, and we can see that there is a trust in our ability to make videos with no mistakes. Thanks for that, and we will see if it is justified. Now before we throw the supposedly venadonite into the water and hydrochloric acid, it is time to take a look at both minerals. And I've taken also a piece that we didn't use for the venadonite video, which is actually labeled by my uncle and called venadonite as well. It turned out that my uncle also had some chunks of aragonite, and this is what they look like. We can see that this piece is labeled aragonite. Now here we get two pieces of vanadonite, at least this is how my uncle labeled them. And immediately it becomes clear what the mineralist in the comment section meant. Aragonite and vanadonite do not look similar when you hold them close to each other. Aragonite is lighter and more of a salmon color and also the crystal seems to have a different shape. So let's take a look at what the textbook would say about both minerals. So typically venadonite forms hexagonal crystals, often short hexagonal prisms or barrel shapes. Now the colors, red, brownish red, orange, sometimes yellow. High luster, resinous or adamantine sparkly. So what does the textbook say about aragonite? Well, often forms elongated needle-like crystals or radiating clusters. Colors, usually white, colorless, gray, sometimes yellowish or blue. Vitreous, luster, glassy, but less brilliant than venadonite. So without looking at the labels, it seems that the two pieces at the bottom are venadonite and the other two pieces are aragonite. But since my uncle at the end of his life suffered from dementia and messed up the order of his collection, we will need to do some more testing as just observation will not convince me. So we will have to do another test. And in this case, this test will be a weight test or a density. Now I must say that the darkish red, supposedly venadonite, seems to be a lot heavier than what it should be. But let's use some measurement tools for this. So what we use here for this specific measurement is a precise scale that goes to the hundreds uh, of a gram. Um, a small container of water, uh, room temperature deep enough to submerge the sample in a piece of uh, thin string, dental floss or fine wire to suspend the mineral in the water, and paper and pen to record the weights. Now, next up, we place the dry mineral sample on the scale. We record its weight, and this is the result. Then, after that, we tie the sample securely with thin thread or dental floss. We tear the scale to zero, uh, so it's empty. And then we submerge the sample completely in water without touching the sides or bottom. And then we record the weight in water. Now, after you recorded the weight of the minerals in air and in water, this is the calculation that you will use. The uh, specific gravity would be the weight in air divided by the weight in air minus the weight in water. Now, that's it. This gives you the relative density compared to the water. But we are amateur chemists, and one thing we forgot is that these samples contain a lot of sand or other rock material to it. So this meant that the results that we got were not even close to what we should have gotten if we used pure samples of aragonite or vanadonite. The results should have been for vanadonite between 6.7 and 7.2 density, very heavy. And for aragonite, it should have been 2.9 light. 
Now what we can see here is that the results of these tests for all minerals are that they are very much lighter than even aragonite should be. So let's consider this test failed and move on to the second test. Now this is an acid test and when you do this wear safety goggles to protect your eyes, use gloved, nitrile or latex and work in a well ventilated area, preferably outdoors or under a fume hood. Keep baking soda, sodium bicarbonate or water handy to neutralize any acid spills. In this case we used hydrochloric acid, 10% concentration and many commercial products labeled as muritic acids are stronger and need a dilution, one part acid and two to three parts water. Also you would need a pipette, your mineral sample and a non-metallic tray or dish to place the sample on. Now let's do the test with all four samples. Now if it would be aragonite, the calcium carbonate reacting with the acid would make it vigorously fizz. Now if it would be vanadinite, lead, chlorovanadate, non-reactive to acid and there would be no fizz or slow or weak reaction. Now here we got one of the pieces of supposedly aragonite, so let's see what happens when we put a drop of hydrochloric acid on it. As you can see it starts to, well, react pretty vigorously. Now here we got piece number two that was actually labeled as aragonite, let's see how it reacts. Again you can immediately see the acid reacting with the calcium. Yes, it fizzes all right. Now this piece that we were supposedly using for the vanadinite video as well was labeled vanadinite. Let's see what it does. No reaction. So that means that this is very likely vanadinite. So here we go. This is the piece that we used in the vanadium video. Yeah, that's clear. That's a reaction all right. So that means that the person that commented on the video was right. This is probably aragonite or at least a calcium based mineral. Now this tells us two things. First of all, we should have used the other mineral that is actually vanadinite and labeled as such. And it tells us the following thing, that my uncle indeed was suffering from dementia, which of course we already knew, and in his final days he cleaned up his collection a little bit and messed up uh, some of the minerals that he, was, uh, that he had. And I know that this happened because some of the labels accidentally turned out on the wrong minerals. We did find out that the labels that were actually stuck to some of the minerals were right. And this is how we could see that we still had a piece of vanadinite that we should have used in the video. Now we also at the end did a scratch test. The copper coin did uh, uh, damage the vanadinite, but the aragonite samples of course weren't damaged because the most hardness of aragonite is, uh, is, is stronger than that of vanadinite. Now this also means that we have to apologize to our audience that thought that we apparently uh, are not capable of making mistakes. Well, it is. I will make a correction in the video of vanadium um, in, the, in the description and mention that the sample that we show there is aragonite and not vanadinite. But hey, if you watch this video, you can at least see real vanadinite, which we luckily also own. So in this video we showed that even when things are labeled, it never hurts to test them. Like the great physicist Richard Feynman said, it doesn't matter how smart you are or how brilliant your theory is, if it doesn't agree with experiment, it's wrong. So today we used an experiment to find out what the minerals of my uncle were and we found out that three of the four elements were actually aragonite. Now two of them weren't labeled, but we figured out now that they are actually aragonite. So this is what you can use chemistry for. Now if you want to see another experiment go wrong, like for instance the density one that we just did, make sure to watch this episode about the redox reaction I did about half a year ago. Now if you think we missed anything, leave it in the comments. This Experiment was rather different than what we normally do. Normally we take something from the box from engineered labs. I hope you enjoyed this and if you like this video make sure to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you will never have to miss another episode.